Hey everyone, it's Tlor, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about rarity and how cards are found in packs. So there's been a lot of questions on the Discord about different rarities, how much cards are worth, how much a pack is worth, what you get, all those kinds of things. So I've covered a lot of this in my unboxing videos, but those are a bit lengthy and have a lot of extra stuff in there. This is just going to be kind of a condensed dump on the rarity and what you can find in packs. So what I have in front of me is a bunch of different cards and I'll go through kind of how these are important. So um, the top row I'm going to ignore for now, uh, which is super rares, uh, which I will cover. Um, crew, so these are like your named crew. Uh, and we also have generic treasure. So these also come in every pack, but I will get to those in a little bit. I'm going to start out with the ships because these are really what drive what you get in your pack. So uh, I'm going to start with this pile of rares. Um, and I also have, have picked the set that these come from very specifically. So I picked the first set that this specific rarity comes in. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. So I have a one card rare, a two card rare, and a three card rare right here. And uh, these are what drive what you get in the pack, is how many cards it is and how rare it is. So if we look at uh, Zephyr, uh, a one card rare, I'm not going to go into stats or anything like that. Um, it is a one masted ship. And these are pretty consistent throughout every set. And then, because this is Pirates of the Spanish Main, you'll notice it has the gold corner. And those are rares. Starting in Pirates of Davy Jones Curse, you can actually get two card rares, which are sea monsters. There's submarines and Vikings and all kinds of other things that start showing up as two card rares. Um, but for, for what we're looking at, uh, we're going to look at this as a two card rare. And then finally, we have a three card rare, and this is from the original Spanish main set. And you'll notice that this one doesn't have any corners on it. Uh, this is the only set that doesn't have rarity listed on the card itself. Uh, eventually they got to where they had rarity on every card. But this is a rare. It's the same as any of these. Uh, it's just not got the little corner on it. So what is important about these? Um, this rarity and the number of cards drives what you get in the pack. So we have one, two, three cards. The biggest ship is three cards. For uncommon, you also have one card, two card, and three card uncommons. Uh, one card uncommons were introduced in Pirates of the Revolution. Two and three card uncommons were in Pirates of the Spanish Main. And then finally, we have two card uncommons. Um, every set has two card uncommons. I think the only three card uncommons come in Pirates of the Frozen North, and they're these uh, long ships kind of a weird outlier, um, but that is the, the three card uncommon that's possible. So in your pack, you're going to get a combination of two ships. Now these ships have a ratio that we have not only mathematically found, um, but we've gotten confirmation from some of the developers of the original game that it's in a ratio of eight to five to three. So, uh, if you add all that up, that's 16. So 3 out of 16 are going to be a rare. Uh, 5 out of 16 are going to be an uncommon. And 8 out of 16 are going to be a common. So that gets to be a little bit awkward when we start looking at pack combinations uh, because there are certain specific combinations that we can have. But you can expect roughly 50% of the time the ship that you pull is going to be common. And that holds true um, also, if you look at getting two ships, 25% of the time you're going to get two commons. Now, when you pull those ships, you're going to get um, at most one rare. We have yet to see any packs where you get two rare ships in one pack. You can get two uncommons in one pack, and you can most certainly get two commons in one pack. And then... Um, you, so essentially you've got those two ships that are driving what you get. So let's say, for example, that I get a one card rare. So I'm going to call that an R1, uh, kind of a notation that will help summarize this towards the end here. 
Uh, and then we'll also get a two card common, so a C2. And there's not a lot of commons that use more than that. So this takes up three cards out of the six cards that we get in the pack. Now, one of the things that we found is that when you pull a one card rare, you're also going to get a rare crew. So whenever you get a rare ship, a one card ship, you're gonna get a rare crew. You also, you have to get a treasure slot in every pack. Now, this is a completely separate independent slot, so it doesn't matter what you pull for ships and crew, you can get, um, and it's somewhere in the one to 10 range, we don't have great data on that yet, um, one out of 10 is gonna be a uh, unique treasure, which is rare, and then nine out of 10 is gonna be the common crew. So these treasures have to come in every pack, and the rarity here really doesn't depend on what else you pull. So that's one card that's gotta be in every slot. And then now we've got our rare car crew that comes with our rare ship, our two card common, and our treasure card. So one, two, three, four, five. If there are any extra slots left over, you can get another crew. So this, even though it's got two crew on it, it's still a crew slot. Um, so we'll put that in here. So this pack would be an R1. We start with the highest rarity. C2, R, C, and then whatever letter we would use for this. So I would use a G for generic. Some people use a C for common. Um, and then if we were to get a unique treasure, it would also be an R. So we tack on the letters uh, for the different rarities here. Um, and I did do that a little bit backwards. It, it's not an official notation or anything, just for me. I usually do the two ships, the treasure slots, since these are always guaranteed, and then these are optional slots. So you're always gonna get two ships, you're always gonna get a treasure, and depending on how many cards you have left, you may or may not get named crew slots. So that makes this very interesting, because if instead of getting Zephyr, which is a one card rare, I suddenly get Revenant, you'll notice the Revenant's three cards, the common is two cards, and then we have our treasure slot. You have no slots for named crew. So that means that this setup, you have no named crew coming in. So that means that a rare ship is not quite as rare as a rare crew because you have half of your ships, are, half of your rare ships are gonna prevent you from getting a rare crew. But whenever you get a one card rare ship, you'll always get that crew with it. So that makes named crew a little bit rarer, even though they're marked as the same rarity. Like these are both marked as rare ships and crew. These actually have a lower occurrence than the ships themselves because of the number of slots in the, in the pack. So again, six cards is what you need. So we can't have a rare crew with a three card rare. So this would be R3C2G. And that would be the notation that I would use for this pack. So let's swap that out for an uncommon. Uh, so this is an uncommon here. And we have a two card uncommon, two card common, and a generic crew. So that's one, two, three, four, five. We have another slot we can put a crew card in. Now, in this set, Spanish main, there are no uncommon crew. There's either rares or commons. So you'll get a, you will never get a higher rarity than the ships that you have in the pack. So we're gonna get a common crew. Uh, as we get into later sets, uh, such as when we get into Pirates of the Revolution, you have uncommon single cards, but you also have uncommon crew. Now, this is why pot, fire pots are more common, is because until like, Pirates of the Caribbean, which is set 10. Pirates of the Revolution is set 3. There's a lot of sets in between. Fire Pots are the only uncommon crew in that crew slot. So if I get a one card uncommon and two card common, I have three slots left. You're going to get a Fire Pot. That's guaranteed to get a Fire Pot because it's an uncommon crew with an uncommon ship and you have those extra slots left over. So that's why fire pots are so common is because it's such a small pool. If I'm pulling from the common crew, there's usually two to three times as many common crew available as there are fire pots. And um, that's why anytime you pull an uncommon ship, you're 
going to get a fire pot. Now, I say that, but if we look at this and we actually pull a three card uncommon, we can look at this and see, okay, we have a three card uncommon, two card common, we don't have room for that crew slot again. So anytime you pull a three card and a two card, you have no room left for crew. So if I pull this three card, and I know I'm mixing sets here, but it doesn't really, from the data that we have, it doesn't matter until significantly later. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Our last one is going to be that fire pot to fill up that slot. So even if you get two uncommons, you're gonna get a fire pot because that's what fills up the slot. So you have to get a card that's smaller than three, a, a ship that's smaller than three cards in order to be able to get that. Now, uh, we don't have any data for sets that have two card uncommons and one card uncommons to know what, what cards we get. But we can expect to get a fire pot, and I would also expect that we would get a common crew. So um, it definitely gets a little bit confusing as to what's available in what set. Spanish Main had two and three card uncommons. Pirates of the Revolution had one and three card uncommons. And then in later sets, sometimes you have two and three card rares or just two card rares. Uh, there's a lot that we don't really have data for, but certainly seeing how these are packed is, is helpful. So the last thing that I wanted to cover a little bit is what are some of the oddities here? Um, so if we look at, um, again, like I said before, we have this three card common. We have very, very, very little data for Frozen North. Uh, so I can't tell you what comes with that. Um, but this is, as far as I know, the only set that has a three card common. You'll also notice in some of the Spanish Main Unlimited, this is an uncommon. So it's kind of this brassy color um, versus the normal silver that you see for an uncommon. Uh, those are both uncommons. Those are the same rarity. It's just kind of a misprint. Uh, and that is also slightly different from... I know this card's upside down. It's to compare the rarity. So this, we have this really dark bronze color. This is actually um, a promotional or uh, special edition rarity. So they're kind of limited edition, special edition um, rarity, kind of interchangeable depending on the set and what cards you're specifically looking at. So this would be a promo that came in the um, pack for like a tournament reward. Um, whereas some of them are, if you sent in for cards, you would get some that were this color. So these two are uncommon, while this one is actually a promotional. And then one other color that you'll run into is this green one. Uh, these are not generally pack pullable. These are the limited edition ones. So like this double size card came in specific, um, specific sets. Uh, the tins that you could get or the mega packs. Um, you'll also get them as the, the ships that show up in the window of the um, value boxes. Uh, and you'll also see them as like the uh, green card cards in Ocean's Edge that show up in the tins that are the junks that are the um, that have been renationalized to other nations. Um, so those are what will show up as green. Uh, sometimes the 10 masted junks are this color and sometimes they're green. So really in general, if you see this bronze or green, that's a special edition non-pack pullable. And then this lighter color here, this brass color is an uncommon from Pirates of the Spanish Main Unlimited. And then generally uncommons are this, this silver steel color. Um, and then last but not least, I didn't forget about the super rares. So starting in Pirates of the Crimson Coast, they added super rares. Now Crimson Coast had just the single ship, uh, and so we don't really know how this was distributed. Um, we don't have a lot of data on Crimson Coast, but this one's a bit of an exception. The rest of them are actually an entire pack. So when you pull a uh, super rare, you're getting the entire set of super rares from that set. So uh, let's see, these four here, um, you'll notice again, you're getting the treasure slot, but it's a super rare card. 
Um, and then you also have your crew, because again, we've got one, two, three, four from our ships. We have a named crew slot left over, but it's super rare. So all of these come in the same pack. And in fact, you get like a little, um, congratulations, you got a super rare uh, ticket or a piece of paper with it, um, just to kind of notify you that that's what you got. So that's how super rares come. We don't, we really don't have enough data to really determine how often that is, um, but it's it's pretty close to on average one per booster box, which would be uh, like a three, anywhere from one percent to three percent pull rate. Um, we would have to open many, many, many more booster boxes to get confidence on that. So that's kind of what um, that breaks down into. All right, so. Now, the last piece that I wanted to talk about is expected value. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back, kind of as our demo pack here. Um, so in a pack, you're going to get six cards. And these six cards have a value. Now, um, they don't. we don't have like a large uh, pool of price data, such as something like Magic the Gathering, where it's um, got so many cards and so many people playing the game that it's almost like a market-driven value. Uh, the values that we get are really going to be driven by what people are paying on eBay, and then there's a few people that have large enough collections that they're moving that they can set their price. Um, but we can take that data and we can analyze how much a pack is expected value. So if I open a pack that costs $4 for the sealed pack, what is my expected value? So commons generally are in the 50 cents dollar, somewhere in their range. Um, and then uncommons can be two to three dollars and rares are really going to depend on the number of cards. So like a three card rare, 15, 20, 25, um, even 30 or 40 depending on the demand for it and then a, a one card rare may only be five six eight dollars because also remember you're getting the rare crew that could come with it so if I get a one card rare I'm also getting the rare crew that could also be three or four dollars so the expected value then is I'm going to add up the cost of each of these slots I'm not adding up specific cards uh, and the reason for that is we don't really have a great um, percentage on how, like if I have a, a three card rare versus a three card rare, such as Black Swan and Constitution, we don't know what the distribution between those two was. But we can uh, at least guess that those are going to be evenly distributed and then average out the price of all those rares in that specific slot. So this is like a one card uncommon. Let's just say that all the one card uncommons are worth two dollars. And so now we look at the specific combinations that we can get based on the data that we have. So say like 12% of packs are going to have a one card uncommon and a two card common. So we know then 12% of the packs you get are going to be $2 plus $1 plus 25 cents plus a dollar plus a dollar. So just making up values. But if we added all that up, that ends up being somewhere around $5 and we paid $4 for the pack. Now if we had instead pulled uh, a common ship um, and not had our extra crew in there, you know, now we only have two common ships, a common crew, and a generic crew. Um, we also have to factor in that occasionally, instead of a generic crew, you can get a unique treasure, which is worth a couple of dollars. So taking st the statistics of each of the different combinations that we can get and how much those are worth, we can average out how much a pack would be expected. Now, because of the rarity, again, of the super rares, um, I, when I've done my analysis, I'll do the analysis without super rares um, to see what an expected value would look like and with super rares. And so if you're pulling a booster box, you multiply that by 36, and that's how much you can expect to get. So if you get a super rare, it's going to spike the, the value up quite a bit. 
but you want to take into account how much just getting everything but the super rare would be as well. So, for example, when I did the Pirates of the Revolution, I paid $60 for the booster box, and the expected value analysis that I did said that I could easily get $120, ignoring the cost of all the commons in there, um, based on just the, the value of the, the rares that are in the set. Um, have I made that much? Uh, it doesn't really matter. I had fun opening them. Uh, I've been able to do some trading with some of the cards that I have. Um, if I was in it to make money, I wouldn't have bought two boosters. I would have bought 20 or 40. So uh, just keep that in mind that I'm not trying to say that it's it's worth it to try and buy a booster. If the booster box is 60 and the expected value is 120 that you're going to make $60, you might. But you also have to go through all the work of, of putting all that together. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're looking at what you expect to get out of these. Um, you need to at least be trying to enjoy it. Especially when you get into sets like Frozen North, where uh, a common like this can be $10, $15, and some of the rares are more than that. South China Seas has the same problem, where if you pull a three-card rare that's one of the five-mast ships, yeah, it might be the $10 to $15 range, and then you go and pull one of the six-masted junks, and now that one is worth, uh, you know, thirty, forty, fifty dollars, whatever you can get for it on eBay because they're so rare. Uh, they're not as as um, market-driven. Just it's it's so rare that people will bid it up much higher than it's probably actually worth. Um, hopefully that helped with a little bit of the financial analysis as well as the statistical analysis of what you can get. Uh, if you watch my booster box videos, you'll see where I start actually towards the end. Um, I'll start being able to open up a pack and go, okay, I got a common ship. What else am I going to get in this pack? Or I got a two-card uncommon. Here's the things that I'm going to get in the rest of the pack. So that can make it kind of interesting to see what you're going to get. And then, of course, it's always exciting when you get to see a super rare get pulled. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I will answer every question that you guys leave.